Hey scholars, good morning. You may notice I'm not here today and we have a guest teacher. I expect you to be on your best behavior. A uh, couple of quick things. Um, the following scholars need to report to the caffeinasium right away for testing. It means you're absent either this week or last or missed a test at some point. So Natalie, Ian, and Chris, please head to the caffeinasium. Take your stuff. You will not be back. You will, however, be responsible for the assignment we're doing today. So make sure that you check Google Classroom. All the instructions will be there. Um, and you have a form to fill out. If you'd like to pick up the graphic organizer from the guest teacher on your way out the door, that would be highly recommended because that is your ticket in the door on Thursday. So grab that before you walk out the door. The instructions will be in classroom in just a few minutes. All right, for the rest of you, pop quiz time. Get out a sheet of paper and a writing utensil. Go ahead and uh, pause the video here if you wouldn't mind for just a moment. Make sure when you get that that piece of paper out that you write your name at the top and you number it one through ten. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so now that we're back, you should have a sheet of paper in front of you and a writing utensil. Let's get going. Now I know this is how you all react when the teacher says pop quiz, but it's, uh, it's not that kind of pop quiz. All right, here's what we're doing. Let's see how good you are. I want to test your, your knowledge here. So once you place your name at the top of the paper and number it one through 10, I will show you a series of pictures. Do your best to try to identify the meaning of the names based on the image. So I'm gonna show you an image, it's gonna have a name on it, and they're gonna be connected. You have to see if you can figure out how. So here we go. The first one, number one, is James. It is a picture of a rose. Number two is Dijon in the Life Application Study Bible. Number three, Brianna. Throwing her fist up in the air. Number four, Marissa with a picture of uh, what do you call that? A starfish and a turtle on some sand. Number five, Sarah, with a picture of a tiara. Number six, Annalise, holding an apple. Number seven, Carson, with a picture of, what do you call that, a swamp or a lake. Number eight, Taylor, with a picture of sewing stuff. Number nine, Josh, Joshua, with a Bible verse. And number 10, Ryan, with some chess pieces. That is a king and a queen. Well, you are finishing up your answers. Our learning target today is we will start exploring onomastics and your success criteria. I will be able to research the meaning and origins of my first name. I will brainstorm six ideas. Actually, it's uh, eight ideas for an image that I'll personally take on my cell phone camera to represent my name. I will also select one or two colors for my project, onomastics project. All right, so here we go. Please pass your paper to your neighbor. Someone else is going to grade this for you. All right, let's see how you did. The first one was James with a rose. In case you didn't know, that's my first name, and my name means planter. Number two is Dijon with the Life Application Bible. His name means God's gift. Number three is Brianna. Her needs high and noble. Number four, Marissa. In case you couldn't figure it out, it means of the sea. Something to do with the ocean. Number five, Sarah. It is for princess. Oh, too many S's there. Let's fix that right now. 
And Elise means grace with God's bounty. So what are we on here? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, number seven, Carson. His name means son of marsh dweller. Number eight, Taylor means someone who makes clothes. Number nine, Joshua means the Lord is my salvation. Number 10, Ryan means kingly, like a king. All right, so here's what you're going to be doing today. So automastics is the study of the, of the history and origin of proper names, especially personal names. So today, your task is to research the meaning and the origin of your first name. There's all kinds of places to, to do this. You can just uh, Google it. Uh, meaning of whatever your name is, so meaning of James, if it was me. There's a good website, behindthename.com, which will give you a little background. Um, some of you may have really unique, different names, and you may have to ask a family member. So, for example, I went to high school with a guy named Reeve. His name was a combination of Beverly and Steve. They took the letters, mashed it up, and it came up with Reeve. So... His name would be Beverly and Reeve, is what the names he would have to look up to find the origin of his name. Sometimes it's a family name, a name that uh, has specific meaning to your family, so you might have to ask a family member. Um, this, for some of you, this may be challenging. You will find a lot of you, your names have a biblical um, connotation to them, and you're going to have to think outside the box a little bit on what you can take pictures of to re represent that. So, for example, the name John or in this case, a variation of John, Dijon, Dijon, uh, means God's gift. There's lots of ways you could represent that. So he did as the Bible as God's gift to man, or it could be something like uh, nature or water or, or something like that. You're going to have to do a little uh, stretching on that one to, to maybe uh, find something close. Okay, so back to this. So you're going to research your name. You're going to put that in Google Classroom. In Classroom, you will find this assignment um, right here. You're going to, in the comments, submit the meaning of your name. And then I'm going to have our guest teacher give you this graphic organizer. So your task today is in this graphic organizer. You're going to write the meaning of your name here. And then, of course, you're going to write your name up here. And then I want you to come up with eight ideas of things you can take a picture of to represent your name and write them in there. This is your ticket in the door on Thursday. If this is not filled out, I will not let you in. So make sure you have it done before class on Thursday. And uh, so let's talk about this really fast. If your name means leader and you want to take a picture of President Trump, um, you would have to have access to President Trump to do that. So. This is an image you are going to take. You're not going to download an image. You're going to take a picture. Um, so let me give you a real life story here. We have a senior named Vienna Franz. Her name means victory. And she said, she asked me if I, if she could take a picture of the World Series trophy. And I said, yeah, that would be a good thing to represent victory. But here's the thing. You have to have access to the World Series trophy. Well, long story short, she was able to gain access to the World Series trophy and she used that for this project. You have to have access to whatever you're taking a picture of. Okay, back to this. Let's see. Okay, so when you, once you've determined what you're going to take a picture of, like I said, I want you to come up with eight ideas first. So this is well thought out. You're going to take a picture of one of those things. And then you're also going to apply the rule of thirds to your image. And we're going to be doing, I'm going to be teaching you a process called selective coloring, similar um, to some other stuff we've done in the past, but not the same. So make sure that whatever you take a picture of, that it is it has vibrant colors in it. And you want to narrow that down to one or two colors. Because if you look at these examples, the names, Ryan, here you can see the colors from the checkerboard and as his drop shadow he used the white. Same thing here. 
here, she used the blue and the gray as the background. You're going to be doing something similar to that here. And at least use, she has a lot of black, but then she used the red of the apple. Sarah, she used the pink from here. All right, so make sure you, whatever you choose has some, some vibrant color to it. And it works best if you're able to set it against something that has a neutral background, something without a lot of color or a lot of clutter in the background. And that's a different color than whatever your, your dominant color is. All right, guys, you have the rest of class to research the meaning of your name and to fill out that graphic organizer. So be on your best behavior and um, have a great day. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.